Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3 Episode 1. Thoughts? This episode is called Laws of Nature. So another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including when this episode first premiered, but none that for anything that came after it. And the, the, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. And then there's some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So, yeah. Um, this was another really solid season opener. They're three for three so far. You know, setting up a new status quo, bringing us up to speed on what, you know, where are the various characters and the, the relationships between them. And, uh, yeah, taking good advantage of what was set up, you know, at the end of the season that it's following up on. And I don't, I, I, I'm not going to be spoiling the 4400 here. Unless I later decide, in which case I'll verbally warn before I do so, hold up an index finger while I'm spoiling, so you can mute and skip it and choose him. Lower my index finger, but I will say the, the this thing of, you know, oh, you know, a completely regular person might end up with superpowers. They did something very similar on the 4400, and I don't think they completely did it justice. I think they're doing a much better job, you know, here. Now, one quick thing, I, I'm i not saying, look, I, I get that it is like a thing of, like, ah, what's the word? The, um, n never mind, maybe it'll come to me later. Um, but, but yeah, so we, you know, we see that Joey has turned on account of the the fish oil and you know we later learn oh you know he meant to do it every day and his his ex-boyfriend really wanted him to get in better shape but now you know he got it and yeah so so they do know that there is that the fish oil is what is spreading it you know I, I really appreciate that we the audience don't have to sit through them figuring that out since we already know we we saw it at the end of season two and <clears throat> see, yeah, so you know they they're 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 going to use lethal force on Joey, and you know it's I really appreciate you know they they say okay put your hands on the hood, and it's like I mean it, it's you know excellent commentary on police brutality. There is nothing he can do in this situation that is going to work out well if he says. No, they're gonna treat him as a hostile, you know. But if you, you know, he ends up doing it, and yeah, blows up the car, which you know we the audience knew that was what was gonna happen because that's what's been happening since, ever since we first saw him in the scene. So, and yeah, holy crap, Daisy got real, real good at controlling her powers, and you know, sends a car flying, you know. Team two's on, you know, on, on their way. Team one is down or wet themselves, and you know, yeah, they managed to get Joey to a safe place. I really appreciate, like the, you know, Lance puts a thing on this fence, and you know, yeah, like I, my first guess would have been that it like cuts through the fence or something, but no, it calls down this big, you know, containment thing. He gets in there, and it goes flying up, and, you know, they can't get any crazier, right? I take that back. And the, yeah, so, you know, once he's on the, the new plane, which I hope they give a name too soon. They, they were pretty quick with giving the bus the name of the bus, so, anyway, I, Colson's new toy. I guess that's what we'll call it for now. But, but yeah, you know, Daisy tries to, to talk Joey to, to really explain it to him, and I really appreciate, you know, she, yeah, she's, she's a really good person. She's, she's being there for him the way that she really needed someone to be there for her. And, you know, to, to an extent, Lincoln was, but, you know, ended up with, you know, turned, turned out, you know, even Lincoln is now saying, well, that was a lie, you know. 
So that was an F and lie. And let's see. Yeah, and we learned that inhumans have been disappearing. And I really love the misdirect. So nicely done that, you know, we see. So, they're, they're, yeah, the ATCU, as they're, they're known by the end of the episode, we see them, you know, l looking over this, this bunch of, like, dead inhumans. And, you know, yeah, th our first thought is, these guys are going around killing inhumans. And then later, uh, you know, Rosalind says, we're not, we haven't been killing inhumans. And, you know, it turns out to be this, this, I guess for now I'll just be calling him Creature, because he's the most creature-looking inhuman we've seen so far. Much more so than even Reyna. And that's a very clever, because, because yeah, you know, no, they haven't been killing them. They just pick them, they find the bodies and put them in this one room to study, to try to find out who's been killing them, you know, but... Yeah, we you know we we know not to trust every government agency that we see in in fiction by now, and <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you know Coulson is, you know, and you love your new toy. I very much love my new toy, which you know it's it's great. You know this was something that they were freed up to do by you know the show getting rid of the bus, you know so. Yeah, very nicely done. I will say I am wondering where May is, but she did ask for time off last time. And this episode is very packed. There wouldn't really have been room for them to explain. And I'm guessing it's coming up. She's she's listed as credit only, so I would be very surprised if she doesn't make s at least some more appearances on the show. And yeah, uh, Rosalind Price is played by Constance Zimmer. So that is three of the, the of the ma main cast of Good Morning Miami, who have now like gone from that you know goofy, perfectly fine, you know, very very milk toast sitcom. To, to being like serious badasses on like a recent spy show, you know, uh, the, the others being uh, Mark, hmm, actually, I suppose it's, if you know, you know, I, I, if I get into it, I would be spoiling, I didn't remember Tiffany Teason was on Good Morning. Wow, I really don't remember very much about that show. I realize now. Just some of the main cast and a couple of bits. Yeah, I do remember Fran Drescher appearing on it. She was funny, as usual. And Suzanne Plachette, obviously. Anyway, um, but, but yeah, I, I quite appreciate that they've been given this opportunity you know these were actors that I liked fine on that show but I really love seeing this like turn of, of them being complete badasses now and right I, I like that you know Bobby is like you know it's yeah it sounds like Bobby has been that, that shield has been spying on Joey but no Bobby just checked his Facebook page which yeah People do really, really overshare on those. And I appreciate that, you know, this thing of they, they the fact that he is, you know, gay, or, or at least not straight, possibly bi or pan, but yeah, the, you know, they, they briefly mention it, and it's not treated as some, like, horrible thing, you know, the, there is something about Joey that is very, different and something that has to be dealt with but it's not the fact that he's attracted to men you know that's just you know and they also don't make it oh you know look we we put one in it's kind of meaningless it doesn't add anything no later on he says you know i used to be closeted and i really hated it i i want to be out so you know they're they're making the metaphor very explicit you know it is it is giving have you tried not being a mutant? But, 
you know what, I, I don't, I really don't mind because it's become very clear to me that there are a lot of people who are never going to get it if it's not made explicit, so, yeah. And a big part of the reason you would even do, you know, Inhumans are very similar to X-Men. I haven't read any Inhumans. I've read a lot of X-Men, and a big part of the appeal of X-Men, whether you're reading or watching the movies or such, is the the metaphor. It doesn't only apply to, to gay people. It can also be read for, for trans people, for example. But it's about, you know, a, a minority that is being targeted by, you know, others, including sometimes politicians and such. And, yeah, they, they mentioned that Coulson is the only person who's struggling with the fact that, you know, she used to go by Sky, now she goes by Daisy. Is that like a dead naming thing? If, if so, I certainly, you know, I'm, I, I can't speak for trans people, obviously, but being cis... But, but the, yeah, um, it seems like positive representation to, to say, you know, it, it shouldn't be a big deal. You just, you, you know, you apply yourself and, and you'll be able to, to use their, you know, yeah, you won't be dead naming them. And, yeah, so Daisy explains to Joey and the audience in case... You know, it had been a little while between watching the finale of season two and this episode, the whole Inhumans thing, and yeah, Joey is very much struggling to accept, and you know, I appreciate that, you know, Mac, yet again, you know, he's not, he doesn't want to use violence, he doesn't want to use force, you know, he wasn't quite the teddy bear. Maybe shouldn't have said, you know, you're going to end up being shot in the face. But the fact that the, the, um, ah, the uh, yeah, he, you know, he shows him these TV clips instead of trying to physically restrain him. Because it is, you know, it it is the more... And, you know, sympathetic, empathetic approach to, to simply make it clear, you know, no, it's like you're, you're going to, you're going to struggle if you just try to, to go out there and, and, you know, even if you were able to fight your way past us and, and leave and go rejoin the, the rest of the world, it's, it's not gonna, you're not gonna be able to just get back to your, your life. And, yeah, so now with with Gemma gone, Bobby has kind of taken over lab duties, which I appreciate. Also because, you know, with the, the wound, the war wound, you know, she is struggling. She's, you know, she says later to Lance, she's not 100%. It'll maybe be a couple of weeks before she's 100%. So, yeah, I, I quite like, you know, it's very different for her character. She was very physical in season two, you know. So, so yeah, it's it's interesting to see this very different, yeah. And I, yeah, I feel like they've done that with, you know, a lot of the, yeah. And a, a lot of the, the main cast the, the, that return... It's it's very interesting seeing Daisy in this. You know, she's she's been confident since at least season two, and and some in season one as well. You know, she's very confident as a Shield agent since at the very least the start of season two. But this thing of she's trying to to help, you know, new Inhumans uh, deal with with the situation, their their transformation. Yeah, I it it feels like a very natural, you know, fit for her. And let's see, we have the yeah, they they talk about you know, Fitz is chasing down leads, has been doing that for a while. And you know, yeah, 
they're they're trying to to be patient with him, but they don't really think that it's likely that he'll get Gemma back. And then we have the let's see, right the the yeah, <laughs> it was it was amusing with the the language. What's the opposite of a barrier? Um, progressive, I guess. Anyway, you know the the fact that like yeah, he's he's trying to speak Arabic to them. And they're like, dude, we speak English, and you certainly don't speak Arabic. And you know the the yeah the the other guy threatens him, and Fitz just says no deal, and gives a great monologue, just fantastic. And the yeah you know he claims that he's giving these split splinter bombs to the you know and and. Yeah, the guy thinks, ah, oh, he's so desperate, he's actually going to give us something that will just kill him, you know, just like that. But the, the you know, it's, it's a flashbang, and because Fitz was the only person in the room who knew that was coming, you know, like, literally, all he actually has to do is, is shut his eyes and be ready to run. And he already, you know, it's not like they... they tied him to a chair or something, because they did legitimately think that they had all the power in this situation. And, right, really like that um, Roslyn managed to set a trap for Coulson, you know, you are a difficult person to pin down, really? Because you're very easy, and everyone else in the, the train car is working for her and pulls a gun on that just very very nicely done because yeah that is the kind of thing where you think yeah i mean she's you know it's it's ill advised of her to travel like that but evidently there are no guards around her you know just yeah always always a big fan of of scenes like that where you know look we're we're meeting in public this is completely safe and then you know people you know, whip out guns or, or tear off disguises or something. Just, yeah, really, really love. And it's very nicely done also. And, yeah, great conversation of just Rosalind and Coulson talking, revealing that they both know a lot about the other. And getting, you know, we're, we get a sense of why Rosalind is doing what she's doing and, and why the, the multi, why the aliases and such. And, yeah, so, you know, Lincoln working as a doctor and, you know, the, <laughs> I, I hear the patient, you know, in, in 103 is quite the talker and it turns out to be Daisy. Yeah, under certain circumstances, she is very chatty, so that's kind of appropriate. And, and yeah, you know, Lincoln is like, I don't take orders from you anymore. You know, this is not, uh, yeah, and and the and and then the the creature looking inhuman attacks. And it's just yeah. Tell me where the inhuman is. Oh, never mind. You know, it's very nicely done. And and just as you know, what do you mean, killing them? We haven't been killing them. Then who? <laughs> just very very nicely done. And then we have the. Yeah, uh, really, really cool when the creature is fighting. Like, holy crap, it's powerful that, like, Lincoln and Daisy using their powers to slow him down really barely slows him down, you know, and Daisy manages to, to make a hole that he falls through. And, you know, as soon as they get down there, they realize, oh, he's, he ran right through a wall to get out of there, you know, knowing that, okay, this is not... Clearly, he's not going to win this one. Let's see. Yeah, and then we have the... Yeah, so... Apparently, the reason that Lincoln wasn't... That Lance wasn't talking to Bobby was the ring, although she says it's not, you know, remarrying. That would, you know, that was a huge mistake the first time. We're not going to make it a second time. 
And yeah, you know, Lance wants to get out there. He wants to hunt down Grant. So yeah, that is a very, very cool, you know, I mean, they don't say his name, but that's definitely who he's, he's talking about hunting. So yeah, that's, I, I really look forward to seeing Lance try to try to hunt down Grant. That's that's going to be very very cool. And let's see. Then we have the um, yeah. We the, the Colson's looking over the the simulation and yeah, seventeen months and and some weeks that I I didn't note. And the fish oil, the, the, the pterogenesis, is going to have spread all over the planet. So, holy crap, they really have their work cut out for them. That's, yeah. And the president refuses to, to you know, he says, ah, oh, those, are, those are just rumors. Which, I feel like that's got to be commenting on, like, AIDS, right? With how, like, Reagan in, in you know, one of the, it's, it's, it's real it's it's up there it's close to the top of his long long list of just unfathomably terrible decisions like it's it's so depressing to think that he he not only won he got a, he got another term you know if the if they hadn't put term limits on he might have continued to to get reelected, and he was such a terrible president. But people liked him because he was in movies with monkeys. He put his pants on two legs at a time, and just I'm not saying those were the reasons that people liked him. I'm saying those were among the reasons to not take him very seriously. Anyway, the the. Yeah, so they, yeah, Coulson and Fitz talk about his theories, and, you know, Coulson feels like this is maybe time to accept that Gemma is gone. And the, you know, I, I will say, you know, when, when he picked up the thing and said, this has the answer, I did for a second think it would be incredibly funny if it just, like, crumbled in his hands, but, yeah. Instead, you know, he, he knocks it and, you know, gets, yeah, opens it, unwraps it, and he recognizes Hebrew. He's able to read Hebrew. I guess, I guess he might be Jewish, or maybe it's just as a, but is he a language expert? His Arabic apparently isn't that good. A anyway, but yeah, you know, and it's, it's just one word, death. Great. All that for a crummy advertisement. But I have to, um, I, I, you know, obviously the, the very literal definition is no, you know, whoever goes through the, the whoever gets absorbed into the, the stone dies. I have to wonder if it, you know, yeah, based on the post credit scene, it seems to be a place. You know, my first thought was, could it be like the personification of death? You know, the, the, if, actually, yeah, yeah, because there's, there's distant growling, and Gemma is on the run from something, so I can't help but wonder if she was transported to a place where the physical embodiment of death itself hunts you, which does not mean that she cannot be saved. But yeah, very, very cool. I, I... At first, I was like, are we really not going to see what's making those growling noises? But then I realized it's actually much, much cooler, because this way there's at least a week of theorizing what is making those noises and where is she, you know, so, so yeah, very, very cool. And also, you know, they did, we got several very great looks at the creature in human, so... Yeah, I, I would definitely say that, you know, they, they did put the effects budget to, to good, for, for the episode to, to good use. And, I th right, always cool to see William Sadler in something, and, yeah, he's still really killing it, playing President Ellis. 
I will say William Sadler is one of those like yeah I th I do think he's great as as the the president it's probably like the least interesting thing I've ever seen him play though like Shawshank Redemption's pretty high up there Die Hard 2 he's great in Kinsey I honestly don't remember I only watched The Mist once but yeah I could imagine that he was also great in that. Have not seen Bill and Ted, though I hear he's he's a lot of fun in that. And I do know what he plays, and I do think that is yeah, I can see how he could play that quite well. So the yeah, the episodes IMDB trivia. <laughs> in the background, Colson has the axe that Mac used to cut off his hand hanging on the wall in his office. Yeah, that is, like, yeah. And, let's see. Chloe Bennett had to have her hair cut for this season to go along with the comic book version of Daisy Johnson. However, they went with a more fashion-forward style than in the comics. This is the first episode of the series to not feature an appearance by Ming-Na Wen as Melinda May. This first episode to come out after Ant-Man and has reference to the PIM Technologies disaster from that movie. So yeah, they mention, you know, this is that that fits considered maybe she went to the may, maybe the thing that happened to, to Gemma was Yeah, I guess they don't say quantum realm. Do they know about the quantum realm? Maybe they just yeah, like the the cause the 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 building, the the PIM Technologies building, you know, disappears at the end of of that because it explodes. Yeah, you know, I actually don't remember. It's been a while since I watched that movie. Anyway, you know, there's a there's a there's a thing that happens there, and but but yeah, they do mention you know he Fitz thought that she might have been shrunk. Yeah, they do say microscopic, so I guess they're referencing the the quantum realm although it's didn't really seem like the the uh pim in the movie was super eager to deal with shield after slugging that guy at the in the 1989 flashback scene and you know he doesn't want stark to end up with the technology so yeah anyway Oh, the, the aircraft replacing the bus is called the Sephir. And Constance Simmer appeared on uh, New Adventures of Old Christine with Clark Gregg. Or at least they were both on that show. Right, and um, did not know this, but Zimmer was also on the King of Queens where Patton Oswalt was also yeah and <laughs> yeah the yeah I won't be talking about that so right uh, President Ellis's speech marks the first shift to Captain America's Civil War and <laughs> Coulson tells Fitz he's going to Sheffield to let Simmons' parents know she has been lost. Sheffield is the birthplace of Elizabeth Enstridge, the actress that plays Simmons. <laughs> Coulson's fossilized hand is in a case in the lab while Coulson is speaking with Bobby. A lot of Easter eggs to... yeah. And... I think that might be about... Yeah, really like when you know Fitz said about the let's see the the scroll casing. You can hi either hand it over in exchange for what's in there, or you can spill my guts in the sand and use the briefcase as a booster seat. <laughs> and let's see. The laws of nature have changed, hence the title. 
And until the laws of man change to reflect that, we can only do what we feel is right. Let's see. And, <laughs> yeah, I, I like, is this still KG banter or are we being honest all of a sudden? And, yeah, you know, Coulson says, you know, I, I lost my left hand. May took off on vacation, never came back, so I lost my right hand, too. 